There are hundreds of games that come out every year, and the industry has been this way since the 80s. There are some games that make big splashes, some that make small but dedicated splashes, and many of which you forget exist until reminded of their existence. Now many of these games have good music, but the games that came and went have few people to remember them. Now if you remember a game on this list fondly or still play it every day, then good for you, but this list was composed from games I personally had never looked into or felt like no one ever seemed to mention. So here are my top 5 songs and games you forgot about. I'm not sure if there are any other people like this out there, but I love the Bomberman games on the N64. My best friend growing up had all of them, and I remember playing the single player and multiplayer dozens of times. And all of them had pretty good music, but Barman Hero had the best. It's very different from the other Barman games in regards to gameplay, but the soundtrack was by longtime Hudson Soft composer Jun Chikuma, which makes up for the strangeness. Heroes has a very out of place soundtrack on the Nintendo 64, because most N64 soundtracks had silly, cartoonish vibes, but this one was straight breakbeat. Every soundtrack has a fast drum beat with an emphasis on cymbals and simple looping melodies and noises that come in and out. In fact, some of these tracks wouldn't be too out of place in a game like Hotline Miami. The standout track for me is Monogenic. If you took out the drum beat, then it might sound like a song from Animal Crossing. It's very chill, but with that driving break beat to support the background. I remember seeing this one advertised a lot, and it's probably still responsible for my inability to remember how Medieval is spelled. It was released in 1998 on the PS1 and takes advantage of the system's advanced sound capabilities with high quality samples to emulate an orchestra. The music is composed by Paul Arnold and Andrew Barnabas, who worked on many different projects but were hard to find much information on. The world has a silly gothic horror theme and looks very Tim Burton-esque so it makes sense that the score would thus have a very Danny Elfman quality to it. The score has that early PS1 compression issue, but it's haunting and matches the dark but goofy atmosphere of the game expertly. Cemetery Hill is the standout for me as it perfectly captures the feeling of a spooky graveyard and would make Danny Elfman proud. Released in 2005 by Capcom, Shadow of Rome is a hack-and-slash stealth hybrid set in ancient Rome. The game didn't do very well and the project that was going to be its sequel was scrapped and turned into Dead Rising, which was a much more successful game. The soundtrack features a strange mixture of ancient instruments and modern synth work by Yoshino Aoki and Kota Suzuki. Aoki, like most Capcom composers, worked on several Mega Man games before Capcom decided that they hate Mega Man. Suzuki worked on Devil May Cry 4 and Resident Evil 5 and 6. Some of the tracks in Shadow Room are pretty generic Hans Zimmer-esque, and some are oddly modern sounding with synth strings and running bass lines. However, in my opinion, the standout track is The Tavern. It's dark and mysterious and incorporates many ancient instruments and styles with a heavy emphasis on percussion. It sounds the most like an ancient song and it fits the best with the Roman theme. This is an interesting one. Advent Rising had a lot of marketing efforts that certainly did not pay off. They had big name sci-fi writers like Orson Scott Card creating the story and script, with Emmanuel Fratiani, Michael Richard Plowman, Laurie Robinson, and Video Games Live's own Tommy Tallarico doing the music. The game was meant to spawn a franchise, but the original failed, so nothing ever came out of it. Tallarico and Friends incorporated a lot of chorus into the music, and while most of it feels very much like game soundtracks from the mid-aughts, there are some standouts like Bounty Hunter. Chorus pieces are always cool in video games, but this one also features a live orchestra along with a live chorus. 
The chorus is singing lines from Dies Irae, which is a medieval hymn that started off as a Gregorian chant, but has been incorporated into dozens, if not hundreds, of pieces since then. Bounty Hunter was used in the promotional trailers for the game and presents the best parts of the game's music, heavy percussion with chorus on occasion to create that epic sci-fi feeling. Too bad the game suffered from acute overhype syndrome. This is one of those great times where a piece of media that everyone forgot about featured a composer who would go on to do great things. In this case, Pandemic Studios' Mercenaries Playground of Destruction features music by Michael Giacchino, who has gone on to score many high-profile movies and TV shows. He's also a common collaborator with J.J. Abrams, the not Steven Spielberg to Giacchino's not John Williams. He could probably be an entire episode, but here are just a few of the movies that he's worked on. Mercenaries features a soundtrack with a lot of variety, from subdued and intense interludes to heroic and bombastic full orchestra pieces. Every track is amazing, but the standout piece for me is Hidden Valley Bunker. It's slow and chorus driven, which is very out of place when this is the cover of your game. It sounds like an outtake from Band of Brothers or some war film. It's beautiful and haunting and shows the amazing chops that Giacchino continues to use and improve on to this day. There are a lot of games that completely fly under the radar or appear for a bit and then are gone. The N64 had dozens of these and pretty much every Sega CD game fits into this category. And all these games have soundtracks, so some are bound to be good. I'm sure I missed many of these games, so if you have a game that you feel was unrepresented but had incredible music, let me know. I had a lot of fun discovering these soundtracks and listening through, so I'm confident that there's a gold mine of music just waiting to be found. Until next time, listen well.